so the three types of categories for signs. So like you were talking about the regulatory, okay? Like the stop sign has a distinct shape, right? You can just see the shape of the sign and you already know what a stop sign is, right? Okay. And then we have our warning signs, whether it's a railroad crossing, uh, construction zone, stuff like that. The warning signs are gonna tell us of a potential hazard coming up on the road, grade. Right? So they're not gonna be at that particular point, they're gonna be in front of that. And then you got your guide or informational signs uh, telling us whether we, there's a historical landmark, we're trying to find a specific place, telling us what interstate we're on, and so on and so forth. All right, so the regulatory signs, again, they command and regulate and they state the law. Do we have to stop at a stop sign? Yes, right? Do we yield? The speed limit is 50, right? We're gonna get, we're gonna go through these a little bit in a minute, but those are law, okay? You break that, that's a moving violation. Okay. So what are the three colors for regulatory signs? This could be a permit test question. So right. Red, red, black, and white, right? Again, when we're looking at the distinct shapes of these particular signs, again, the stop sign being octagonal or an octagon, or yield signs for a triangle, speed limit sign, rectangle, sometimes they're square, it depends on what exactly what they're trying to tell us. What's the difference between a stop sign and a yield sign? Okay, go ahead. Um, yield sign, you don't stop, you just slow down, unless there's something there. I'm sorry. I, you just slow down unless there's something there, but you don't have to stop. You're, you're very, very close. Yep, exactly. So a stop sign, we have to stop, right? There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Whereas the yield sign, we slow down, we check for traffic. If it's safe to continue, we can. If we have to yield to the point we have to stop, then we must stop. Now, this rock back right here, when you take your driving test, when you come to a complete stop, what they're talking about with rock back is, you ever been in a car, you're right, exactly, you kind of feel that, uh, uh, where you, the car kind of goes forward and it comes back. It's that tester, or the, the examining person, they're gonna wanna feel that. And if anything, do yourself a favor and even count one, 1,000, just make sure that you've come to a complete stop. Get into a habit of that, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Because between the suspension and the tires of the car, you're gonna feel that little bit of whoop, whoop, it's gonna come back. Make sure we come to a complete stop. All right, so the yield sign there, that we can see right here. Are we required to stop there? See one shape in their head, no? Two no's, three no's. What do you think? Those marbles rattling in your head aren't going to be picked up by the video, so you better use <laughs> yeah, yeah, words. Here, use your here's, words. Here's the thing, people: is you can be wrong in here. That, that's okay. If you give an answer and it's not right, it's okay. I'm not. We're not going to judge you. You're here to learn, right? Make the mistake in here. Don't make it out there. Okay. So one thing too to observe: Do you see any other? Do you see any other uh, traffic signs in that intersection? No. You don't see any other signs there, right? So just by looking at what I'm seeing here, we only see one corner that has a traffic sign of any kind, right? So are we required to stop here? No, right? As we approach that intersection, we're, we're looking, we're scanning, right? On the streets, both streets there, and we gotta make sure that if there's no traffic coming, we, are, we can slow down, but we're not required to stop there. Can you go back right there? Yeah, absolutely. There actually is another yield sign on the other side that's hidden. Oh, right here. Crotch of right the tree. there, crotch of the tree. So you have to be really Yeah, careful. you really have to be careful there. But sorry about that. No. Okay. What's this sign right here? The crosswalk there. The railroad crossing, right? Okay. So what's different between those two pictures there? That's a yield one as a stop sign. Okay. So what are we required to do on the one on the, the, the left there? Stop. We have to come to a complete stop, right? What about this one here? Do we have to stop? No. 
would we, why would, where would we have, what instance where would we have to stop here? The train's coming, right? Exactly, right? Now, why is one of these a stop and one of these is a yield sign? Look at the pictures for a minute see if you can figure that out. Did they do this on purpose or did they say, ah, I don't know, we're going to put a stop here and put a yield? What do you think? Because there's something obstructing our view with the stop sign over there. Very good. What's obstructing our view? The fence, right? And actually, that might even be a corner of a building right, right here. That tree is obscuring too. So, what, if our view is obscured here, they put that stop sign there for safety, right? So you come up to the stop, you come to a complete stop at that stop stop line, and you got to peek around the corner and make sure that there is no train traffic coming. If, the, if you still can't see, because it looks like that fence goes right up to the stop line. Right. How are you going to know a train's coming? It makes a lot of noise, right? They're not stealth creatures. Right. So you'll hear that rumbling, put your window down like the school bus operators right. open their doors. Exactly. At night, they got the best headlights. That's what I want. Look, you get headlights like that on the Safeway car when people dynamite their brakes in front of us, we just burn the paint right off the car. <laughs> okay, great. No, it's good. So any questions on that? So as you can see, sometimes you're like, why would that do that? That doesn't make sense. There's a reason why they have this particular sign up there for, for a particular reason. All right, what are those two signs there? We have a do not enter and we have a wrong way. What's the difference here? Do not enter is showing you that you can't go in the wrong way, showing that traffic is moving in the opposite direction of you. So you're on the line. You're on the right track there. Okay. The do not enter sign is right. Is, they're both regulatory, but the do not enter sign is that sign where it's, you are about to go the wrong way on the street. Okay. Whereas the wrong way sign, you are definitely going the wrong way. Okay. You're already at that point where you're going the wrong way down the street. So what happens here if we're going the wrong way? You're, once you realize you made that mistake, you are going the wrong way. Well, what are we going to do? What's that? U turn, right? So, what are we going to do though? What's the proper procedure for that though? Do you mean to put your Oh, your four way flashers, your hazards? Probably going to come to a complete stop, right? And then once we know that traffic is clear, you're wrong. You're not, I mean, you're not wrong. But once. Once that we know traffic is safe, we probably make a make a U-turn reverse, if, or it's safe to do so. Whether there's a place we can turn around, or if we have to do a three-point turn, we can turn around. What does that symbol mean there? Don't do it, right? You can think about it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. That means it's prohibited, right? That sign on the very left with the P like that, what does that mean? No parking. No parking, right? The next one? The left turn. The left turn. The right turn. No, 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 no your turn. turn, right? Exactly. Okay, speed limit signs. Maximum speed in perfect conditions, so our speed limit is 50 versus the minimum speed in perfect conditions is 40. Um, again, perfect road conditions. So like if you ride, say you go down one of the interstates and you have a speed limit sign that says 70 and you have a minimum speed limit is 40, is there a time where we wouldn't be able to do either one of those speeds? When would that be? What if we're driving in the snow NAMI? Can we go 70 miles an hour? No, we might not even be able to maintain minimum speed, right? Traffic might only be going 15, 20 miles an hour. So there are certain instances where we're, we're not going to have to, we're, we're not going to be able to obey that, right? Okay. Why do you suppose we have the minimum speed limit sign on uh, that kind of interstate like that? <coughs> <coughs> or yeah, here. Oh, there we go. Stopping traffic. So like what? 
So we try to keep certain vehicles, like farm tractors, stuff like that, off the interstate, so we keep that flow of traffic going, right? Okay. Is common speed, what is common speed when they say that? What's common speed? Is ever an excuse for speeding? You know what they're talking about when they talk about common speed? The speed limit is 50, and everyone else is going 65, right? Everybody's going that speed, right? Is that, get, is that legal to do that? No, right? Again, we answer that question there. When can you legally go below the minimum speed? Again, weather conditions, whether the road's icy, um, we have weather conditions that don't allow us to go that safe speed. If traffic is moving at 70 miles per hour, driving at 50 miles per hour is not safe and could cause serious accidents. But what about keeping up with traffic that's traveling faster than the speed limit? I know just the guy to ask. That question is very easily answered. Should I keep up with the flow of traffic even though they're exceeding the speed limit? Very simple. The answer to that is no. The speed limit is the speed limit. If it's 55 miles an hour, it's 55 miles an hour, not 60. If it's 70, it's 70, not 85. The problem is people will be picked out of a group of cars, they'll be stopped, and they'll be issued a summons uh, for speeding. And of course, the response is, well, why did you pick me? Everybody else was, I was going with the flow of traffic. Everybody else was driving fast. Well, the fact of the matter is we can only stop one car at a time, and it would just happen to be your turn. So no, the speed limit is a speed limit. If it's 55, it's not 56, it's not 57, it's 55 miles an hour. How many times have you heard that? I don't know why, I mean, everybody was going that fast. I don't know why you picked me. My brother was notorious for that. All right, one-way signs. When would we see one-way signs, or one-way streets for that? Way? Maybe, like, sometimes in a parking lot, they want you to go, like, one way. Yeah, that you don't possibly, you yeah. You go forward. Oh, in the cities, right? Downtown, downtown Minneapolis, downtown St. Paul. Very common to have one-way streets, right? Okay. Different shapes too, right? You gotta be aware of that. Um, the different colors and that, both being the same exact thing. Okay. What would be some other indications that we're on a one-way street, besides the fact that it's labeled as a one-way street? Anybody? Everybody's going the same way, right? Great, traffic's all going the same way. Cars may be parked on going the same way on both sides of the street. I have cars parked on the left side as well as the right side, they're facing the same way. Anything else? By the way, it's illegal to park on the wrong side of the street, so. Oh, if it's a two way street, you park on the wrong side, that is illegal. Right. To get a ticket. Very good point. What about the signs? If the signs on both sides of the street facing the same way, might be an indication that it's a one-way street. And the road markings themselves, which we will get into here in the next presentation. But that also will tell you that you're on a one-way street. All right, no turn on red. Can we make a, a right-hand turn on a red light? We can, but what do we have to do first? Watch the other cars coming. Key here is a red light. What do we have to do with a red light? Stop. We always have to stop, right? Once we come to a complete stop, then we get right. Then yeah. we have to yield to it, right? So now we might have an instance where you have a sign like that, right? We have to, you have to make very sure that, that there's a sign like that isn't present. So you're constantly scanning. We have, we have to look at these. So here's a picture of a no turn on red sign. So why would a no turn on red beyond that street corner right there. What? You're thinking, I like it. <coughs> Why wouldn't they want you to turn turn on a red light there? What do you think has happened at that intersection numerous times to justify the few hundred bucks right. to right. do that? Maybe there's been some accidents there. Maybe, maybe on this where we can't see, maybe there's a building there or something that obstructs your view, some sort of landscaping, there's a tree there which is aiding in the crashes. Um, 
maybe pedestrians. Maybe there's been a couple accidents involving pedestrians and they just don't want you to make that turn until the light turns green. I know where I live in St. Michael, that's exactly the case. We have a street like this where there's a historical building that's literally on the corner of that intersection and you cannot physically see until you're around the corner. So they have a no turn on red there, so you can't turn until the light's green. That traffic is stopped. That makes sense? Okay, parking control signs. So where is the restriction in effect? So that no parking any time, what does that mean there? From the sign forward, right? No parking. That middle sign there, what is that telling us? Telling us two things, right? Telling us where, where we can't park. It's also telling us when we can't park, right? What's no standing mean? I mean, I can't stand on the sidewalk. All right, everybody, stand up. Stand up. <laughs> is that what the sign is telling you you can't do? You're all breaking the law? Uh, involves the car, right? At the end of the school day, who's out in the parking lot? Moms, dads, right. sisters, and brothers, brothers, and they're waiting to pick up students, right? A hundred years ago, who was in the parking lot? Moms, dads, brothers, sisters. And the horse. What were they driving a hundred years ago? Horses, right? Yep. What were the horses doing while they're waiting? They're standing. First car comes along, they say, this is a fad, we're not going to change the sign. It's never been changed. Right. So in reality, the no standing sign means, you can sit down. So in reality, what that sign means is that you can stop, drop, passenger lap, pick them up, but then you need to move. You can't stay, even though you're in the car while it's idling, that means you're standing there, or you're, you, can't, you can't be there. Where would a sign like that be, you think? Hmm? <coughs> School or what, what would be an important building that we don't want anybody in front of so that we can get it? There you go, exactly, very good. That was the exact answer that looking for. Okay, so that lower uh, that lower left sign, what's the restriction there? What's that? No parking, right? No parking from 8.30 to 5.30? When, it, when is parking permitted? Right, but what's the key there? Two hour. Two hour, right? Oh, and trust me, that gets monitored. Yep, they will, they will drive around and check, and make sure that you, that you uh, move within the two hours. Okay, regulatory signs here. The diamond marking means that that particular lane is restricted to certain certain uh, circumstances. Whether it's an HOV lane, a bus lane, or for bicycles. You know what HOV is? Anybody? Oh, I heard it. Uh, there we go, high occupancy vehicles, right? So in the state of Minnesota, that would be how many people? Two or more, right? There's other states where it be, could be three or more. I think New York, there's some other states too that might be like that way, but state of Minnesota it has to be two or more people. Um, obviously, there could be a bus, like Metro Transit, school bus lane, bicycle lane. Um, can we use a bicycle lane to make a right hand turn? Yes, but what? Huh? We kind of want bikes. Can we make a right hand turn if we're in our car? Is what I'm asking you. Yes. Yes, but what? We have to look out for bicycles. We have to yeah. yield to the bicycles first, right? Very good. You guys are, yeah, you guys are doing, you get, you guys are figuring it out. Okay. All right. Now, in that one video, the first video we saw, they actually showed this as an information sign. Is this a regulatory? Warning or information thing? Regulatory. Oh, why? Because only um, wheelchair people can go there, or um, not wheelchair, like yeah. handicapped. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Otherwise, what will happen to you if you park in that spot? $200 fine. Right, so it's actually a regulatory sign. So this sign is actually, it's like the English language, you know, you got to always got the exception to the rule. Same thing, there are certain signs you need to know if we break that, 
Yeah, you could actually get a fine for that. But very good. All right, so let's talk about some warning signs. What's the difference between those two? Remember that picture, the two pictures we saw? So we have this sign versus this sign. So the cross buck, was which sign did we see in that the picture? The bottom one, right? So which would tell us what? <coughs> Look at the colors. The colors are going to be a key here. See this? That's at the railroad crossing. Okay, that's the regulatory sign right there. That yellow sign, that's your warning, right? Kind of um, the cross buck is now a warning sign. It's now a warning sign. Yep. Even though the color scheme, it's another exception to the rule. They uh -huh. moved it like in 1970 or something. Really? Um, but it's it's a it's a warning, warning sign. sign. So both railroad crossing signs are so warning. Both of those are warning signs. But this one's going to be at the actual crossing. Right. This one's right. So this warning sign here is the one that's going to warn you of it. That's the only warning sign that you're going to see that's around. Mm -hmm. For real. Yes. It's only a lollipop. Yep. Where are we put the pop signs? Where are we? Where would you see? That's going to vary on, that's actually a very good question, that's going to vary on the road itself. If we're on a bend, that warning sign might be further back than where it's straight ahead. You know, if the road is straight and you've got very good visibility, that warning sign might only be a couple hundred feet from the railroad crossing. And it, so the road design, you know, the, how it's, if it's curved or straight or how fast we're going, is going to also going to dictate how far that sign is going to be in front of the actual Okay.